One of the most feared times in history occurred in the aftermath of the French Revolution, and this was known as the Terror. It's believed that in a short period, around 17,000 people were dragged to execution scaffolds across the nation, and they were walked up the stairs of the guillotine, where they were swiftly and brutally executed on the device of death known as the nation's razor. The guillotine would be the device that came down upon the necks of the French king Louis XVI and the queen Marie Antoinette, two hated figures across the nation, but even those in organising the terror would be dragged to the execution device. There were stories of wives of men who had been condemned, shedding tears as a slanted blade fell on the necks of their loved ones, but this was then interpreted as an act of defiance against the revolt, and because of this, these women were then next to lose their heads. But there was one woman during the French Revolution who was a peaceful nun, but her actions were seen as a stain against the revolution, and for this she too was dragged to the guillotine. Join us today as we look at the execution of the nun guillotined during the terror, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Victoire Conan de Saint-Loup was born in Rennes in January 1761, and she was a daughter of a noble and a judge. Because of this, Victoire's family were rather well known and prominent, but at a young age following schooling and education, she became a sister and a nun, and specifically her order would be involved in offering help for women who were suffering and support for them. But during the French Revolution, the convent was shut down and closed which caused a lot of heartbreak, especially as the work it was doing was very good for the local people of the town. But because of this, Victoire then returned home to her family, and she lived in a castle where her father had settled after he had left being a member of the Parliament of Brittany. But Victoire continued to be a devoted young woman to her faith, and inside of the castle she practised her faith, and continued what she had been taught inside of the convent. But she then began to paint many pictures and figures, including images which drew links to Vendée insurgents. The war in the Vendée took place against the French Republic, and it was similar to a peasant's uprising, but in the region it became known for being counter-revolutionary and royalist. There was a significant amount of violent repression put into force by the Republicans to try and get the region to fall into line, meaning thousands of people were executed because of this. It's believed that around 15,000 people were shot, drowned or guillotined to try and bring the vendor to heel. As well as this, there were dozens of thousands of civilians who were massacred by forces, and the Republican army would rampage throughout different settlements and lands and would then burn these to the ground. They caused a huge amount of chaos, and it's believed that in the war in the Vendée, around 200,000 people were killed overall, with the majority of these being those who lived there. The Republicans laid waste to around 25% of the population, with these being slaughtered in the most barbaric ways. Many people who commented on and spoke about this action, or even sympathised for the way these people were being treated, were said to have been committing treason, and could have been linked to being anti-republic, and having anti-revolutionary sentiment. As Victoire had painted images regarding these, and had drawn insurgent symbols, it was said that she had given her support and also her sympathy to the rebels, and therefore was anti-revolutionary, meaning she could be executed for her crimes. She was suspected also of having contact with rebels in the region, and for being a supporter of these rebels over the new order, and because of this she was arrested. In 1793, Victoire, who let's remember was a nun, a woman linked to peace and piety, was thrown inside of Karl Hayek's prison, and she would, whilst inside of the prison, practice prayer and spend most of her time in prayer. She was also known to have consoled and comforted other prisoners, and offered them spiritual guidance and support, as well as keeping herself quiet and busy with books and writing. But outside of the prison, things were about to get much worse for the nun. Her parents were implicated in her actions, and they were said to have been her accomplices, and because of this her father, the former President of the Parliament of Brittany, on the 10th of October 1793, was arrested, as was her mother, they were then imprisoned in the same prison as their daughter was. Her parents were then sent to the Revolutionary Tribunal, and they were then imprisoned inside of the tough conciergerie in Paris. But Victoire continued to paint, and she was said to have been rather skilled, and she continued to do this while she was in prison. 
But on the 19th of July, 1794, Victoire, along with her parents, were brought in front of the Revolutionary Court. This was the court that would decide the fates of thousands during the Reign of Terror, and that would show no mercy. The court had convened days earlier, and they heard the cases of the Martyrs of Compiègne, a series of 16 members of the church, including 11 nuns, who were all executed on the guillotine for their alleged involvement in counter-revolutionary actions. This shows how ruthless the court could be, and the same tone would be adopted to deal with the actions of the de Saint-Luc's family. Victoire and her mother and father did not have any legal representation or counsel. They were also not given any opportunity at all to defend themselves and their actions to the court. The tribunal was harsh with this, and because of this thousands would be sent to the guillotine without any word being spoken by the condemned with regards to their actions. Victoire and her family were said to have been enemies of the people for having seconded the revolt of the Vendée brigands and fanaticism, and because of this they were condemned to death and were said to have been executed on the guillotine. Executions using this device in Paris were very popular, and thousands would flock to see the guillotine blade fall each day, and during the height of the reign of terror, dozens were being condemned every single day, and heads continued to roll all week. Executions using the device were very quick and were very swift, and usually those who had been condemned by the revolutionary court were taken to sites across France to be immediately executed for their actions. The de saint Lucs were taken together as condemned criminals to the guillotine inside the Place de la Nation. This was found on the eastern side of Paris, and it was where a number of prominent people would be executed and then buried nearby in a cemetery. The guillotine blade here fell many times, and it was set up in the southern part of the square. Victoire, when her family arrived at the execution site, asked to be executed first, and she bravely wanted to go before her parents. She told her parents, You taught me to live with the grace of God. I will teach you how to die. It must have been a heartbreaking moment seeing the family say their goodbyes to each other, and Victoire was then offloaded from the cart, and was taken up the execution scaffold stairs, where she was greeted by the executioner and his assistant. These secured the nun to the wooden board, which was then slid under the guillotine blade. After a few final checks were made, the executioner was happy, and he then released the slanted blade of the execution device, which immediately fell on the neck of Victoire Conan de Saint-Luc. Her head fell into the basket, and then following this, it was the turn of her parents to be executed. After the executions, the bodies of Victoire and her mother and father were buried in a common mass grave, which was quickly dug a short distance away, and they were buried at the end of the garden of a convent. Following the execution of Victoire, in centuries later there have been calls for her to be made a saint, and she is considered a martyr, who was executed for religious reasons by counter-revolutionaries. There are many churches which show images of her in France today, but she was executed at a time which was incredibly brutal and shocking. The terror, as it was known, was a time in which a guillotine blade continued to fall, and the point of this was to make sure that the French people did not waver in their devotions to the revolution and call for a restoration of the monarchy. Because of this, heads continued to roll, and it was a savage time, and the revolutionaries had no care for the religious nature of these condemned victims. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.